Hey there. So last time I did a video, I talked about everyday carry with travel, what you what works getting on and off an airplane, going through security, things like that. I really feel like I shorted the primary everyday carry. I know I've talked about phones before, but we all carry a phone with us, and that it really is our primary everyday carry device. You know, it's got a flashlight, it's got all the apps we need for travel. I'm going to break down the apps that I use for travel and uh, what I use for backup, et cetera, uh, as far as on the phone when traveling. To start with, let's talk about airline apps. Now, when I travel, especially overseas, actually not in the U.S. ever, but uh, overseas, um, I'll usually print a, a, uh, boarding, a physical boarding pass. I don't always, especially like in the countries like that I'm really familiar with, like Ecuador, flying back and forth between the cities in Ecuador. I know the airports, they all, t they all deal with electronic passes. I don't bother there. But when I'm going to places I don't know very well, I don't know what their uh, TSA counterparts are like, I usually print a boarding pass. But I also have it on my phone. Now, there are a handful of airlines that I fly. And I'll, I'll list them out real quick. You know, in South America, it's Avianca and LATAM. Um, up in Mexico, it's Air Mexico. And then the, the Delta American United combinations with Alaskan Southwest being rarely used. I have all of those apps on my phone. So when I fly, I always have the um, trip loaded into the app for the airline that I'm using. That way I've got boarding passes. I can get baggage notifications, I can get flight and gate change notifications. And those are invaluable to me when I'm in the airport. The gate suddenly changes, I want to get a push notification on that. I don't want to have to stumble, remember to stumble to a screen and find it or find out worse when I've left the lounge with five minutes to get to the gate and find out the gate's been moved. So I like those notifications coming to the phone and they're super handy for things like that. So I always make sure that the, my current trip is loaded up on my phone. For the airline app that I'm using. The other class of app I use for travel is, of course, the hotel apps. Now, every time I stay at a hotel, and I tend to follow the points, you know, I've, if you haven't figured out, I love points. So I've got the airline or the hotels that American Express cards give me points or give me status on, such as um, Hilton and Marriott. And then I also use, because they're really kind of handy down in South America, the uh, Holiday Inn or IHG and Wyndham has been my go-to for South American hotels. I have those because I keep the um, reservations that I have loaded on onto those apps as well. Again, for similar reasons. I can get notifications of issues. I can request checkout if I just walked out of the hotel. A lot of times I don't bother to stop at the desk. I leave the key in the room, walk out. I'll check out on the way to the taxi or while I'm in the taxi. It's just handy. So I use those apps um, every time I go to a hotel because it's just handy. I like the notification. I like the electronic keys with them, although I don't always have success with them on my phone, but I do frequently try, especially on the Hilton, whether you'll get an electronic key. I can check in, check out right off the phone. I don't have to wait in lines. Besides the airline and hotel apps, there's also the uh, a series of utility apps that I use. And you'll see them on my phone. I'll show them real fast. But basically, they're uh, the TSA app, which will tell you if the TSA's gates are open at a particular airport and what the wait times are. There's a global entry app, which uh, gets me back into the country and skirts global entry lines. Not skirts. You're going through properly. But you, uh, you can speed up the global entry process with the app. You take your picture. There's a whole video on it that I've done. Basically, take your picture, you can uh, bypass lines and get to global uh, immigration really fast. Awesome. I've used it twice now and I loved it. So besides that, there's currency converters. Uh, luckily, down here in Ecuador, it's on the US dollar. Panama's on the US dollar. But uh, Colombia, Mexico, not so much. And you know, you can get used to doing those in your head, but it's kind of nice to have a currency converter to get some accurate. And they keep the most current exchange rate um, available. So it's it's nice. You can keep up to date on what the exchange rate is with those apps. And I'll give you an example of one when I show you my phone. Uh, Google Maps, obviously awesome. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that in a second. There's 
Um, WhatsApp, which if you're traveling abroad, you, I would have never guessed that WhatsApp is so popular, but it is. This is the primary communication method for uh, Mexico, Colombia, uh, Ecuador, at least places I've been in South America, and certainly in Europe as well. So I use WhatsApp all the time when I'm traveling. So I'll show you the apps on my phone. Being somewhat obsessive compulsive, I have to have all of my uh, travel related apps on a single screen. And these are the ones that I usually use most of the time. They're divided up here, of course, with uh, the airlines and travel, uh, or transportation at least, I should say, because I have Uber up there as well, but my airlines that I use. The hotels that I use, I keep down at the bottom. I'm not really sure why, but that's where they are. And in the middle are my travel utilities. I've got Priority Pass and AMX for lounge access. I believe I've already talked about the uh, Global Entry app, that's very nice, and currency converters and WhatsApp. Translate and Google Maps. These are all important utilities that I use all the time when I travel. My phone. But let's talk a little bit about Google Maps. Google Maps is great, but when you land in a foreign country, your phone may or may not have data access. So we don't want to download uh, your target country apps directly into your phone so they work offline. That is a feature in Google Maps. I'll show it to you in a second. But basically, you can say, here's an area that I'm going to. And this could be country. It could be a city. It all takes up space on your phone. So you have to decide how much you want to download. But then you can download that app. Now, geolocation is satellite on most phones. Sure, you can augment it with uh, Wi-Fi signals and certainly with um, uh, LTE signals. But satellite is the gold standard, and you can navigate by satellite with a downloaded map without any phone service. Very handy, only if you remember to download the map though. So we'll go over that now. Finding the download for offline is a little awkward, so I thought I would show you here. You search for the area that you want, click on the name of it, then up in the upper right, you can go to download maps. You kind of circle or zoom in on where you want it, what area you want to download hit the download button, and uh, within eh, so much time, you're gonna have it finally downloaded. We'll tell you when it's done, but it does take a little time. So as I mentioned, you know, the primary thing that you need for Google Maps, if you haven't downloaded them for offline access, is of course, service. Phones can be really handy uh, for many things, but without data service, they're a little limited. Now, most airports have Wi-Fi, you can find them. Not all. And sometimes the Wi-Fi is pretty bad. So besides just Google Maps, some important things I will download offline. I'll actually do a screenshot of boarding passes so I don't have to fumble and try to get that app up, especially if I don't have a paper backup. Uh, I haven't had any trouble using a screenshot because most of it's barcode and the screenshot captures it just fine. Same way with Priority Pass for the card. I've screenshotted that card so I don't have to fumble and try to get the Priority Pass app up because it's kind of slow. Uh, hotel information, travel itineraries, I'll download to an offline folder in Google Drive as well. So I've got those things offline in case they don't have connectivity where I'm going. So there's an app that I heard about from another uh, traveler. It's called TripIt. I thought I would touch base on it real fast. I, um, I'm heading to Columbia and I thought, well, let's just try it with the trip to Columbia. And so I grabbed, made an account and thought, well, let's give it a little spin and see what happens. So I, I went in there and it, it is kind of interesting. You have a phone app and there's a couple ways you can get your itinerary into TripIt. Uh, it, its basic purpose is to track your itinerary and you can enter it manually, of course, but it also has a feature where you can forward your confirmation of emails. So. I'll, I blasted a series of confirmation e emails for uh, three different airlines for my trip uh, and uh, just one hotel. Yeah, one hotel and three different airlines. And it actually impressively put together the itinerary. I was actually impressed with the um, how it recognized all the emails, well, most of the emails. Uh, the first leg of my trip is on Avianca and for some reason, I had a Spanish version of the confirmation email as well as an English version. I first sent it the Spanish version. It, it didn't like that. 
but I sent it to the English version, so it seems to only speak English. It's not it's not um, duolingo yet. <laughs> so it was impressive as far as how it assembled the um, the itinerary. Now, the thing is, I'm not really sure what I do with it at this point. There's a pro version that I think you can track seats, but you don't get uh, your boarding passes on it, so you still need your airline apps. Uh, you can't do late checkout or electronic keys on it, so you still need your hotel apps. So I'm not sure how useful it is other than grabbing my information for marketing, which I suspect is the purpose of it. And then there's a whole privacy concerns where you just emailed your entire week's itinerary to a third party. So I don't think I'm going to use it anymore. I thought I would talk about it because um, it, it was mildly entertaining and I was impressed with its uh, ability to ingest your emails to form up the itinerary. But I'm frankly, I'm having trouble finding it to be useful. So unfortunately, that's kind of where I fell down on that. I hate to trash talk an app. Again, impressive on a does the itinerary. I just can't find a use for it because it doesn't do what the other apps are on my phone already, other than give me an organized view of my itinerary, which maybe I'll need in 10 or 15 years, but right now I can keep it in my head. Real fast, let's touch upon um, how many phones do you take with you? I think a lot of people just carry one phone, which is probably uh, reasonably sane. Never been accused of being reasonably sane. I carry two phones with me when I travel. I have one in my pocket, or sometimes I'll put it in my sling when I'm going through um, security. And then I have one in my uh, travel backpack. I will never put my primary phone in the travel backpack. It will either go in my pocket or in my sling because my backup phone's in my backpack. So th those two phones will never be in the same uh, piece of luggage. Now, my wife carries two phones as well. However, what she does is she carries a cheap phone, one of my old ones, and with nothing important on there, just basically Google Maps, a way to navigate and a way to do WhatsApp. Uh, her view is that she doesn't want banking apps or travel apps or anything with personal information on that phone. And she takes her secondary phone out when she walks around. So in case she gets mugged, she won't lose it. I take a different tact on that. I want completely redundancy. So both of my phones have all my apps on it, all my multi-factor authentication as well. Now the phones are locked, they are encrypted. So if one gets stolen, it's probably not going to be the source for much data intrusion. Um, I try to, they auto lock, I lock them every time I finish using them. And like I said, they're fairly secure as far as phones. They don't have facial recognition. Um, I have pins of reasonable complication lengths, et cetera, for the phone. So um, two different philosophies, you know, one kind of a throwaway burner phone that you take if you're worried about getting mugged. And I go with the complete redundancy model where either phone can be lost and I can still work, which is my primary purpose for a phone, travel and work. And frankly, nowadays with all the multi-factor authentication for pretty much everything at work and everything on online, you need that phone. Well, I think that ends of the video about uh, my primary EDC uh, tool, uh, my phone. I guess I didn't even mention that phones have flashlights, but everybody knows that anyways. So I hope you find this information useful. I hope you uh, go out and use your phone and enjoy it and have safe travels. Take care. Bye.